Assalamualaikum and konnichiwa. Thank you for joining today's episode of Academically Speaking with me, Azalea. And in today's topic, we will be talking about being a research student. Now, in Japan, in order to enter university, you will have to take an entrance examination, also known as a new gakushiken. And a new gakushiken can be quite tricky, especially depending on which university that you are applying to. And the application process itself requires a lot of documents and a lot of preparations. Now, if you are already doing your degree in Japan in that university, this can be slightly easier for you because you will probably have all the information that you already need to prepare it beforehand during your final year of your degree and moving to that transition. However, if you are an international student from overseas and it is your first time coming into the program, coming into Japan, it can be quite difficult for you to get all this information and sending in your applications can be, well, it's it's more difficult because you're sending it from far away since you're not living in Japan. Because of this, there is an option to enroll first as a research student, also known as a Kenkyusei. So what is a Kenkyusei? So a Kenkyusei's job is basically to prepare for said entrance examination. It, especially for scholarships such as the Japanese government scholarship, MEX, Mombuka Gakusho, they will generally enroll their scholars as a research student first. And they will enroll them for a course of two years. And in the course of two years, you can take, you can try, <laughs> attempt to take the entrance examinations as many times as you want uh, in order to continue the scholarship. Me being a research student is a very interesting experience because it's kind of like having one foot already in the university and one foot not really yet inside the university because although you are a research student, there are many things that doesn't really apply to you, such as the thing that really mm, bugged me the most was not being able to apply for Shinkansen or train discount tickets. And yeah, that's basically the thing that I didn't like the most, not being able to get a discount. However, and you also as a research student are not required to take any credits or any classes. Any curriculum, any sort is highly dependent on your relationship with your supervisor as they will determine what is it that they are expecting from you because most of that time is being used to prepare for the entrance examination. While this research student phase might come off as irrelevant to some people due to, you know, even myself at first because you really want I really wanted to start my program as soon as possible. I really wanted to enter the PhD program faster because I was so excited to start doing research. However, I overlooked the important part of it which was actually building the relationship with your supervisor and really getting to know what you are getting into. Because once you are inside the program, then there's no turning back. Or maybe there is, but you know for most of us, there's no turning back because once you know you start something, you have to finish it, and it can be like a safety net because during that two years, you can figure out like is this really where I want to study? Is this really the supervisor that I want to work with? If it's not working, you can always have a different choice. You can always have an idea, and it can really save a lot of people a lot of time. For my entrance examination, I had to prepare six copies of my research plan, six copies of my master's research projects and six copies of a lot of other things that I actually don't remember but if I do I'm gonna list them and after that for the entrance examination itself it was a panel interview with six members of the faculty including my own supervisor but he wasn't allowed to say anything. I took the exam in February 2018 and got accepted the following month of March. So yeah, you don't exactly have to wait for the course of the course of two years is the maximum so I could have taken that if I had failed the entrance exam I could have had another year to prepare and take it again before I had to go home and my scholarship got cut off but yeah thank god I got in and now I'm in my second year and doing these videos so that you guys can have a better idea of what graduate school in Japan is like Alright, thank you so much for joining me on today's episode and let me know if there's anything that you guys in particular would like to know more about. See you soon. Assalamualaikum.